Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Psalm 144 um, has a lot of familiar phrases within it. It's written by King David, and it's not just simply a recycling of prior thoughts that he's had in other Psalms. But for example, the Lord is called our rock, and he's referred to as our fortress within this psalm, and uh, as he is in several other psalms. But essentially, David is calling on the Lord to come down in power, for the Lord to reach down from heaven and to um, intervene in his affairs and in the affairs of his sons and daughters on earth. And all the while, David is um, pledging fealty and praise to the Lord for this relationship that he has with him and for the relationship he has with his people. So let's read now Psalm 144 of David. Praise be to the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. He is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge who subdues peoples under me. Lord, what are human beings that you care for them, mere mortals that you even think of them? They are like a breath. Their days are like a fleeting shadow. Part your heavens, Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they smoke. Send forth your lightning and scatter the enemy. Shoot your arrows and rout them. Reach down your hand from on high. Deliver me and rescue me from the mighty waters, from the hands of foreigners whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. I will sing a new song to you, my God. On the ten-stringed lyre I will make music to you, to the one who gives victory to kings, who delivers his servant David from the deadly sword. Deliver me. Rescue me from the hands of foreigners whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. Then our sons in their youth will be like well-nurtured plants, and our daughters will be like pillars carved to adorn a palace. Our barns will be filled with every kind of provision. Our sheep will increase by the thousands, by tens of thousands in our fields. Our oxen will draw heavy loads. There will be no breaching of walls, no going into captivity, no cry of distress in our streets. Blessed is the people of whom this is true. Blessed is the people whose God is the Lord. So friends, we don't know the occasion for this psalm, but there are several references to foreigners that are enemies of David's that are troubling him in various ways. So this may have been um, uh, referencing the Philistines that came against Israel or the, the different groups that opposed David early on in his reign. We're not sure of the occasion. But nevertheless, David begins with praise, and he relates to the Lord as he often does as his rock and his fortress. Praise be to the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle, He is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge, who subdues peoples under me. So a lot of um, martial type references within that, uh, saying that the Lord is the one that trains his hands uh, for war and his fingers for battle. He calls God his fortress and his stronghold. Stronghold is like a place of last defense that can be uh, defended with a few strong um, uh, warriors. So it's a, an easily defensible position. The Lord is referenced this way. The Lord is his easily defensible God. And he's also David's deliverer. He's David's shield in whom he takes refuge. David then wonders why the Lord would even be interested in mere mortals. And I've certainly wondered that myself, and perhaps you have. Listen to the words of David. Lord What are human beings that you care for them, mere mortals that you think of them? They are like a breath. Their days are like a fleeting shadow. Now, this is true, but David almost seems to distance himself from human beings. He says that you think of them, that you um, care for them, 
as if he's not included among the human beings. But it is a marvel to me that God, um, in his in his majesty, is so concerned with our daily lives, because clearly from the scriptures, he is intimately involved in our lives. He cares about every aspect of who we are. He wants to hear from us conversationally, not just praying for a list of wants and and uh, confessing sins, but just talking to him about our days. He's, he's very interested in the affairs of men. David goes on to invoke the Lord to come down in power. Verse 5, Part your heavens, Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they smoke. Send forth lightning and scatter the enemy. Shoot your arrows and rout them. Reach down your hand from on high. Deliver me and rescue me from the mighty waters, from the hands of foreigners whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. So this reference to deliverance from foreigners seems to allude to a time of war in the life of David. Once again, unknown, but generally speaking, it seems to be a time of war and oppression. David pledges to sing the Lord a new song. Verse 9, I will sing a new song to you, my God, on the ten-stringed lyre. I will make music to you, to the one who gives victory to kings, who delivers his servant David. From the deadly sword, deliver me. Rescue me from the hands of foreigners whose mouths are full of lies and whose right hands are deceitful. So this I will sing a new song to you, David's pledge. David wrote hundreds, perhaps thousands of songs to his God. He played musical instruments. He worshiped God in prayer and praise and singing and recitation. Uh, The Psalms of David that we have are probably just a representative sample of the myriad of new songs that he wrote to his God. David speaks of a future for his sons and daughters. He says, When you deliver me, Lord, then our sons in their youth will be like well-nurtured plants, and our daughters will be like pillars carved to adorn a palace. I like the, the imagery. He goes on to say that there'll be abundant provisions when the Lord comes down. Our barns will be filled with every kind of provision. Our sheep will increase by thousands by tens of thousands in our fields. Our oxen will draw heavy loads. There will be no breaching of walls, no going into captivity, no cry of distress in our streets. And so when the Lord comes down, friends, um, all is well. The Lord blesses in every aspect of our lives with our, our children, with our provision of food, with our defense from enemies. All of these things are are in abundance, are available in abundance when God comes down. David closes with an observation on how blessed, truly blessed, God's people are. Verse 15, Blessed is the people of whom this is true. Blessed is the people whose God is Yahweh. And so we acknowledge, along with David, that we are blessed to be able to relate to our majesty in heaven, to our omnipotent God who can do everything. He's present everywhere all at the same time. He knows everything all at the same time, and yet he cares for us as individual human beings. It is uh, amazing that in our mortality, we should have anything to offer our God. But even though our lives are a fleeting shadow, friends, he loves us and he wants to hear from us. So let him hear from you today. Lord, like David, we ask that you would come down in power But we just want to take this opportunity to thank you that you're concerned about our daily lives. You actually think of us, Lord, and it's amazing that you care for us. God, like David, we pledge to sing to you. We pledge to worship you, Lord. May our sons and our daughters flourish under your care. May our lives have abundant provision for what we need. But Lord, most of all, we pray that you would draw us into ever-deepening relationship with you, our Lord Jesus, and your Holy Spirit. Your people are blessed when they're with you, Lord, and we want to be counted among them. Help us now, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. 
If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.